Father Robert Sirico on the, on, uh, on the message of the Pope and how it's translating. I, something must be inspirational here, Father, because in the course of his remarks, we learned that President Obama and Vladimir Putin are going to be meeting face to face at the United Nations for their own mini summit. I don't know whether he was the divine inspiration for that, but what are we to make of the Pope, his remarks, and, and the fact that he, he was an equal opportunity offender and inspirer, I guess. What do you make of it? Well, I, I think you're right about that, though. Um, uh, like you, I'm reluctant to analyze this in a political sense, yet he is in the Congress. And so it invites a political analysis of the sort. Um, I, I think that uh, he was very balanced. That you could say that the scaffolding of his speech hung on four Americans. Lincoln, with regard to liberty, uh, Martin Luther King, with regard to inclusion and rights for all people, Dorothy Day, with regard to social justice, and Merton, with regard to dialogue, which is a phrase that he used repeatedly, especially at the beginning of his speech, and peace. Now, these are interesting characters. They're all, of course, uh, Americans, but two of them are Catholics, two of them are Protestants, and the two who are Catholics are both converts to Catholicism from atheism. So it's an interesting blend of personalities that he put together. And to be fair, you'd have to say those all kind of tilt on the more progressive end of the scale if you want to satisfy your political urge No, no, to you're scratch. right about that. But he also made a bow to atheists when he addressed uh, the people who were waiting yes. outside, some of them for the better part of 12 hours, by uh, saying, all right, if you don't want to pray for me, give me your good wishes, which I thought right. was a very kind of humorous way to just say, you know, everyone take a chill pill here. Yeah, no, he's in a, he's, he knows that he's in a country that separates church and state, though in a lot of uh, respects we are a far more religious nation than a lot of those nations that have a, a kind of church and state setup. But I think he was warmly received from the moment he walked in. Everyone uh, was spontaneous. I have to say that the most sustained applause, the most energetic applause, and the longest applause, other than when he first came in, was when he made reference to the responsibility to protect protect life at every stage of yes, its development. Yes, yes, yes. And then he immediately barely took a breath and linked it to the abolition of the death penalty. Yeah, that was very interesting. That's what it was sort of, all right, so he's going to hit a lot of people's buttons here. But you know, Father, in the end, yeah. I, uh, do you get a sense that, um, you know, he seems very gentle, but he's forceful in his own ways. This, this feeding of the poor he's going to do, he skipped a lunch with congressional leaders to do this. Didn't think that was a good idea. We're now told that that fiat car that he's been tooling around in, that was his idea. He didn't want the traditional uh, motorcade vehicles th sure. that we provide anyway when they come to town, uh, any leader comes to town. But he wanted to make sure he had that, I think, as a symbol of who he was. No doubt who is the pope in that you know, a parade of cars, but, but that he is insistent on that image. Why? Well, uh, that's just him, though. I mean, this isn't uh, some affected thing. Uh, I think the media at times makes more of it than there really is, <laughs> uh, especially when they talk about him not living at the Apostolic Palace, because where he lives, in terms of the rooms, they're the equivalent level of, you know, professionalism. But uh, the kind of thing like the Fiat or his car at home, uh, this is him. He, he's the guy who collected rubber bands every month and return them to the uh, newspaper uh, kiosk uh, for them to reuse. This is the man who is. Sounds like if Stuart you really Barney. Want to Sounds like very Stuart Barney, very cheap. <laughs> no. Uh, if you want to, to really get the hermeneutic of this pope, that is how to interpret him, it's he's very individual and focused on the people he's with, the circumstances that he's in, and not even if you look at him uh, on a, um, a kind of line of people, he's talking to the one or two people who are right in front of him. And I think that kind of uh, sees itself in his policies. Uh, while he's for the poor, he says, you know, welfare isn't a great thing for the poor. You may need it in certain places, but the real thing we need to do is to support people who are in need, to act as, toward them as, as neighbors and brothers and sisters. That's very well put, Father. I didn't want to ask you any offensive questions because I know it could be fatal for me. But, Father, bring thank you. Bring it on. Bring it bring on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Good seeing you again, my friend. <laughs> you too.